This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, January the 16th, 2019. Today in 27 BC, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus, who was not that Julius Caesar, was given the title Caesar Augustus. Octavian, as he was known at the time, defeated his companions in the Second Triumvirate and took Julius Caesar's place as the de facto dictator of Rome. But Rome was not an empire, and the Romans were very, very sensitive about having a king. And so Octavian, being the shrewd leader he was, insisted on being given two titles. He was to be known and addressed as Caesar Augustus, a title which means the revered one. His formal office, though, was to be princeps, or the first citizen of Rome. Before Augustus, Rome was the Wild West. But after his reorganization, Rome managed to last 500 years as an empire in modern-day Europe and fully a 1,000 years as an empire in modern-day Turkey and Hungary. It's hard to overstate the importance of Caesar Augustus and his crowning today in 27 B.C. In 1707, today, a little farther north, the Scottish Parliament ratified the Acts of Union, which made possible the nation that we know as Great Britain. It's no simple task to understand how Great Britain, the United Kingdom, England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Scotland are all related to each other. But it's easy to see that most of the history of the British Islands has involved brutal warfare. Long before Robert the Bruce and William Wallace, the English English and the Scottish have had very different ideas about leadership. In 1603, though, King James VI of Scotland, who was well-liked and respected, inherited another crown upon the death of his cousin Elizabeth I of England. And so suddenly, these two nations shared a king. Well, you couldn't ask for a better deal for Scotland. It took a hundred years, but the two nations were united into one kingdom, and that kingdom would be known as Great Britain. Today is the birthday in 1937 of Cardinal Francis George of Chicago. For 17 years, beginning in 1997, Cardinal George was a moderate success. He was known as a learned and an able administrator and had the unenviable task of guiding the archdiocese through the revelations that his predecessors had covered up years of the abuse of children by priests, nuns, and brothers. When the scandals had subsided, he was a different man. He was genuinely appalled at what had taken place and how church leaders had failed the people so badly. In 2010, after seeing the damage done to religious freedom under President Barack Obama and made possible by the scandals in the church, He famously said, I expect to die in bed. My successor will die in prison, and his successor will die a martyr in the public square. His successor will pick up the shards of a ruined society and slowly help rebuild civilization, as the church has done so often in human history. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.